this morning, uh, I'm well and born again. Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. For anyone who uh, do not know me, I'm Stephen Jeroga Solomon, and I'm married to one Susan Waidera, but she's not in today. She has traveled to Njoro. Uh, they will be burying their aunt tomorrow, so she's not with me, and we have been blessed with four boys, and I'm, uh, I'm blessed to be a son even in this uh, house, and I want to, to thank God even for this opportunity, and also uh, glad even f- uh, for, for the opportunity from our bishop and mom, Pastor Aris. We, uh, we uh, enjoy serving together with you and I, you, and even the entire past- uh, uh, pastoral team, even for this opportunity. And I know that God is going to minister to each one of us. And uh, this morning, I have a topic entitled, Effective Positive Confessions. Effective Positive Confessions, or you can call them creams. And this week uh, started on a, on a rather uh, 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 sad note that uh, I happen to be a Zondo reader of Rasambo. And uh, we have both, both members who are here, Rokari and others in the diaspora. And it so happened that one of our member, uh, member uh, two of our members who are in Dubai, did lose their dad, who was a reverend. And uh, so, so after we thought that they are going to come on Monday, but that was not possible. So they were to come now on Wednesday with the burial being on Friday. So we decided to give them a fellowship, an online fellowship where by your four nations, you are people from Kenya, uh, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, and I, I can't remember the other country. And we thank God because uh, we we were able to minister to them. But as I was talking to them, I remember I was talking to them and and encouraging them on the issue of the legacy of faith. And I was reminding them of Deuteronomy 7, 9, uh, how uh, God, uh, the word of God says that uh, him, that uh, uh, he sees over, he sees sees through his covenant, uh, his his covenant and mercy to those who love him for a thousand generations. And I was giving them uh, even part of my own life. And the, the, on Wednesday, I remember the Lord ministering to me so powerfully on the issue of legacy, the legacy of faith that was left to me by my dad. And something that, that came up, I remembered something that he had confessed. And the Lord brought it so much alive in me that I even took my phone and uh, I took notes on it. And I, I saw it was Wednesday, 11.57. And uh, 11.27. And I, and I, note, I noted like four points, uh, in fact, and, uh, and I started meditating on that. And I remember when we met on Thursday with uh, Reverend Milson, Pastor Brian, and, and some other people we meet on Thursday night, I shared with them. And I want just to give this short testimony, even as we proceed. So my father arrested and went to be with the Lord on 15th January, uh, January 2015. And I remember my sister who follows me, she was a top performer. She was always getting number one. Uh, and on very rare occasions, she, she got number two. And my dad could promise her almost everything. And I remember several, I had my dad telling her, Jerry, do well. I will even t- take you to study overseas. Uh, I know God is going to enable me even to, to take you overseas. You continue performing well. So she, she was, so, so, my dad was always so proud of my sister. And I remember my sister did not ask anything and she was denied. And my dad did that with a lot of conviction. And I know that uh, later, my dad, uh, my, my sister was called because she had a, a B plus with just one point, uh, she, uh, B, uh, she could have gotten a, a minus, but she was called to Egerton to do agriculture and home economics. And my dad felt that that was a road deal. And that was, uh, that was in 1995, he, he felt that was a road deal. He said, no, Jerry, we are going to do something. And my dad started to talk to different people and a stranger came through as a destiny helper, and my, uh, there was an, uh, an opportunity for my sister to go. But we did not have adequate money. And what my dad did, he went and talked to his two brothers, who are people who are very prominent. prominent. And both of them, is, though in different places, it's like they had the same script. And they told him, no, hey, that is not possible. Do you have all this money? But my dad told, to, to, told them, me, I know I'm a giver. And I always stand with people. And you, you are witnesses. I even sometimes send you. I know that just as I have stood with the people, even now I know God is going to send people to stand with me. So he was not, uh, he was not stopped by, by, by the negative, what they told him. And in fact, a fundraiser was done, which was very successful. And in 1995, uh, 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 the beginning of December, my sister went to US. So, so she has been there for almost 26 years. And now she's one of the real software engineers there. And for that, we give God all the glory. So I was looking just these 
positive confession that my dad did over and over in my hearing, and God bring it to come to pass for his glory. So, and I'm using the word positive because uh, later you are going to see that you can make negative confessions and they are going to come to pass in your life. So, uh, so, so I'll quote some scriptures, but there are a few scriptures that we are going to be projected, but the others just to enable us, just, to enable myself, just to explain so that we'll be able to move together. So effective uh, positive confessions result after knowing you are praising Christ and confessing boldly in faith and expectancy the things that you desire from God. So here, when you know your position in Christ, that you are a child of God, so you confess boldly in, in faith and in expectancy that things that you desire from the Lord, God is going to come through for you because you are not limiting God because you recognize that God is the source of all blessing. So, and this can be through a deliberate prayer confession. It can be through a deliberate prayer confession. Or it can be a verbal conversation, a, a, a verbal confession. And this verbal confession, it can be while talking to others, or even when uh, you are speaking to yourself. Because one thing I have come to learn is that God understands the language of the heart. So, people may not understand but God understands the language of the heart. And like uh, one of the, uh, the examples we have in the Bible is the deliberate prayer uh, declaration that was done by Hannah. Uh, Hannah, because she did not only ask uh, for a child, but she asked for a son. And that is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. So that is just uh, to mention. And I remember uh, uh, having this knowledge, I know I have used this severally. Uh, where I live, uh, the neighborhood, most of the people almost, they have standby generators. And when I, I, I moved there in 2018, I remember I had left uh, my welder who was welding. And I thought that, uh, so, so in, my, in, in my next door neighbor, there was a generator. One of my neighbors, who a generator, who was a generator, so I was a steamer. I was a steamer, and I was a steamer, and I was a steamer. Kwa my neighbor huyo mwingine nikasikia generator eh, in Aguruma. Sasa hiyo nikasema, "Oi Mungu, eh? Najua wewe ndio unilete hapa, hm? Mm? Na najua neema yako ambayo imenilete hapa itanidumisha hapa." Na so that was just a verbal uh, that hiyo nilifanya kwa undani, lakini severally I have declared that upon my life. Na nime, and I have seen that coming to pass. Kwangu nimeweka three phase. Na saa zingine huko kuko na generator saa zingine huwa stima hakuna. Na kwangu kuko na stima. Kwa sababu nikuwa na hiyo three phase, eh, nikuwa na mutu wa stima uwa na ita, tunatoa hile face ambaye ina moto, tunayeka hile ingine, na maisha inaendelea. Eh? So I have seen the faithfulness of God. So it can be, uh, that's one of the uh, examples of deliberate prayer declaration. And then others, uh, uh, so the other one you said is verbal com uh, confession to others. And just as I, I mentioned about what my dad was telling my sister, in our hearing, and I remember another example. Uh, in, one, in my house, uh, when I was constructing my house, uh, I, showed my, uh, I showed a very close member to me, to my family. Uh, you see, when an architect gives you, he gives you the, the layout and he gives you what is called perspective. I remember when I was So in other words, he was telling me, he was a toboa. But by the grace of God, and I know some people here are witnesses, it came to pass. Na huyo ata nikampatia contract, ye ndi ata niwekea stima kwa utukufu wa mungu. And it came to pass uh, to the glory. I'm not saying this to brag, but I want us to pick something. And now I want to talk the, about the example, even when you confess to yourself. And one of the practical examples that we have is uh, of the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. We are not reading this, but it's usually in Mark 5, Mark 5, verse 25 and 34. And verse 27 and 29 says, When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, Watcha to chike yosh. She said, Alisema, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of affliction. And in verse that four, and, his, uh, and he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your uh, affliction. 
So this lady with the issue of blood, akuwa naongeresha umati, because she knew she was unclean, ni kitu alikuwa anafanya kama amejificha. But one thing, she was speaking to herself, and she was saying, if only I touch the hem of the garment. So even today, maybe where you are, maybe there is that need, that, that desire you have uh, to the Lord. And even inside of you, you are saying, but God is, as I have just told you, God understands the language of the heart. So he's able to know that heart desire that you so much have, even uh, for his glory. In other words, there are two types of confessions or claims. Deliberate commanding confessions and conversational confessions. We should always remember that words have staying power. And I'll repeat this, that words have staying power. And this, uh, we can see this from Leviticus 19.14. Leviticus 19.14, uh, uh, the scripture says, this God when he was giving uh, the Israelites the row end, he was saying, you shall not curse a deaf, nor put a strawberry brock before the, before the blind. So God was warning the Israelites that you shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling brock before the blind, but shall fear your God, uh, he said, for I am the Lord. So because words have staying power. And that's why the scripture in Isaiah 54 verse 17 bit says that no fashion fo forged against you will prevail and you will refute. You will, you will do what? Refute. And refute, I was looking at, 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 uh, at the meaning, is deny or contradict a, a statement or accusation. Every tongue that accuses you. That's why the word of God is saying that you shall refute. Na ndiposa mutu akisema mambo ambaye si mzuri kwako, unataikana kukataana na hiyo maneno. You should refute that. Because uh, as you are going to see, is that death, and, uh, death and, and, and life are in the power of the tongue. We are going to see that shortly. And uh, let's see now the main scripture, uh, our guiding scripture, there are these three. Proverbs 18, 21, in the new NLT. And this is what the word of God says, that uh, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequence. Yeah, so uh, it says uh, death, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge in it, eat its fruit and bear the consequence of their words. Yeah. yeah, 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 okay, I think it's this version. So, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruits and bear the consequence of their, their words. Remember, I talked that we are talking about positive confessions, and shortly we are going to see about how you can make even negative confessions, and they apply to your word, because it's important we remember that words have staying power. Praise the name of Jesus. So both deliberate command confessions and conversational confessions have power because power of life and death is found in the tongue. And there is a, a story, a, a testimony I had from a, a, a very close uh, a, a, a friend of mine. We happen to be their best couple. So he's somebody we have worked with. And he told me about his neighbor. His neighbor one day came. He was someone who was taking one too. So he was drunkard. And he came bragging and was, was telling the wife, because, because the, the guy was just so, uh, he, he was doing extremely well. He had a, a shop in Yamakema and he was doing extremely well. He had a frat. And in fact, that day he came and said, ah, Mimi wa naomba mungu, nisikai kupitisha miaka dharadhini na sita. So, but now, because when he was drunk, he was a bit rough. So the wife said, no, uh, I'm going to speak to him so that he can cancel those words. But the wife, and like you and me, forgot. And what happened two, two weeks before his 36th birthday, he, he was unwell, was rushed to Avenue Hospital, and where, while there, it was noticed that he had uh, the, the cancer of the lung, and it was in stage four. So in, on his 36th birthday, he passed on because words have staying power, and he did not refute, did not cancel those words which were spoken. So even in your anger, mind the words that you speak. The other scripture we are going to see is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. So when we, uh, because we have faith, we speak, uh, the, we speak out the faith that we have. So in, uh, and then in Mark uh, 11, 20 to 24, and says now, 
in the morning, as they passed, they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from uh, the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, Rook, the fig tree which you, you cast has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he's, uh, he, will, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you, you pray, believe that you, be, uh, you, you receive them and you will have them. So that is the scripture and in your own time you will be able to see that there there is say, the word say appears five times in that scripture. From, that is uh, uh, Mark 11, 23 to 24. It is there five times. God is telling us that we will have what we say. And even as we saw in Proverbs 18, uh, 21, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And it concluded by saying, we will eat its fruit and bear the consequence of, uh, of their words. Proverbs 6, verse 2. Proverbs 6, verse 2. Uh, the scripture here is reminding us that we are ensnared or trapped by the, uh, uh, that you are, a sneer, you, are, you are sneered by the words of your mouth, or you are ensnared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. So it's important that we know, we need to know that you can trap yourself. And a trap is a trap. Whether you have been trapped by someone else or you have, or, or you have trapped yourself, you still fall. Even as we heard about that man, who, uh, uh, even if you spoke intentionally or accidentally, and we, we heard that about that testimony which I have just given you. But in the scripture, just touching, we are not reading, in, now, in your own time you'll see in Numbers 14, verse 1 to 3, this is after the 12 spies had been set out there. And uh, two of them gave a positive report, but 10 gave a negative report. And in Numbers uh, uh, 14, verse 1 to 3, they were complaining. And in fact, in verse 3, they said that uh, it's better we go, uh, we, we, we could have remained uh, there in Egypt instead of coming here and falling down. Uh, so, uh, so it says that, why has the Lord brought us to this land uh, to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Then let's go to verse 20, 28, verse 28 of the same. And this is what God, yes, you, you read in your own time, but uh, we just want to pick something. But in verse 28 it says, this God was talking to Moses, say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, just as you have done what? Spoken in my hearing. So I'll do to you. I'll do to you the very things I have to say. Na badai ndi wanaambiwa nyinyi ambaye muko zaidi ya miaka 25 mutaanguka kule jangwani. So so in your own time you are going to read but that was, that, is, that that's not the main thing. So uh, after I was meditating about that I just remembered about this uh, this servant of God who is called Doug uh, Howard Mills who is the general overseer of the Right House Chapel International, who encourages believers to do three things, to name it, claim it, and take it. I've said this, uh, this uh, Doug Howard Mills, the general overseer of the Right House Chapel International, encourages believers to name it, claim it, and take it. In the next few minutes, we are going to go through those three, three things. We are beginning with name it. Name it. In this part, you identify what you desire from the Lord. You identify what you desire fr uh, uh, fr from God. You outline your desire. So this morning, I don't know what your desire is, but you can outline your desire. Maybe your children uh, have been sent away from, uh, uh, from school. Maybe you can outline your desire because he, remind the, he remains the great I am. He can be your provider even in your situation. Maybe you have come here and you have not known the Lord as, uh, as, as, as your Savior. But you, you, this day you can say, yes, I desire to know the Lord. Yeah? That can be your desire. So you just need to name it. We go to God because he is good, loving, caring, faithful, and not limited in any way. We don't just need him. He is enough to us. He remains Jehovah El Shaddai, God of all sufficiency, God Almighty. So he's not limited in any way. So we can go to him. And that's why the scripture in Psalms 147 verse 5 uh, usually declares that great is our Lord, exalted in power. 
his understanding has no limit. So his understanding, he understands all you are going through. His understanding has no limit. And that is our God. Hmm? He's not limited in any way. And the promise we saw in Mark 11, verse 23 to 24, which we read about that fig tree, uh, where we, we saw, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not that you will have what you think. So from that scripture, what we can pick is that God is not going to give you what you think or what you hope for. But it is promising that you will have what you say. Because we, uh, the scripture reminded us that uh, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So you will have what you say. So ask yourself, what have I been saying? Am I the one who have trapped myself with the words that I have been saying? So the issue is saying. So what is your desire today? The scripture does not say whatsoever things God desires of you, but it says whatever you or even me desire from God. So see, mungu ambaye kila natamani kuhusu wewe, lakini ni hile mungu ye mwenyewe, ni hile wewe unatamani kutoka kwa mungu. And I would like to see that, we see that scripture in the, new, in the King James Version. King James Version, verse 24. Kama itapatikana. Yes, uh, it says, Therefore, I say unto you, wh wh what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall receive. I wanted to we, we pick the, the word desire. So the emphasis in, in King James Version says that whatever things you so ever you desire. So that's what the scripture is reminding. Whatever you desire. So that's why I'm asking you. And that's why you need to ask, always ask yourself, what do I desire from the Lord? And that's so that you can be able to go even to the next. Uh, 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 in John 15 verse 7, 7. John 15 verse 7. It says that if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So, uh, so when you abide in Christ, your desires will rain up with the word of God. So that's why when you, we talk about name it, is that you are outlining your desires to God. You are saying, this is what I desire from the Lord. And we have seen that when you abide in him, and his words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire, and shall be done for you to the glory of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, so it's for us, we have been called to name. That's what the word of, uh, of God encourages us. And the second point, cream it, cream it, idai, cream it. To cream it means to confess your faith about what you desire from God. So, yes, that, uh, you, yes there is that desire, but yes, there is now the aspect of faith. You need to confess your faith about what you desire from the Lord. Sometimes it may be several. You do it several. Mpaka watu wengine wanaona ni kama wewe ni manoki au ujifahamu. Lakini kwa sababu unajua ni mungu ambaye unatumainia, utaendelea kumuambia kwa sababu unajua ye ni muaminifu. So, and you, you, you see, we do have, there are different levels of faith. But it's you to exercise your faith. Because the scripture reminds us in Hebrews 11 verse 6 that without faith, it's impossible to praise God. So it's you to exercise your faith. And scripture in many instances reminds us that God honors faith. We just saw about that, uh, the, the woman with the issue of blood. He was told that your faith has made you well. Mm? God honors faith. So are you exercising your faith? Mm? So you may say that, yes, I have a big faith. But let's always remember that the strength of our faith is not the amount of faith we have, but is on the faithfulness of our God. Our God remains the ancient of days, who is forever faithful. Hmm? So he's forever faithful. His faithfulness, uh, 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 his faithfulness faileth not. In Mark 11, 22, and we saw it, uh, this is what the scripture says. So Jesus answered to them and said, have faith in God. This is the scripture uh, about that fig tree. And, uh, and God is the one who, who, who told them, have, uh, it's Jesus who told them, have faith in God. Even this morning, I'm telling you, let's have faith in God because great is his faithfulness. We need to allow the word of God to dwell richer in us. And it's only from a point of revelation of God, uh, of the word of God, that you can confidently claim the promises of God for us. So you cannot claim the promises you do not know that they exist. For example, if you do not know 
that Psalms 112 verse 2, what it confesses about the man who fears the Lord, about the righteous, that the children of the upright, they shall be mighty in the land, the generation of the righteous will be blessed. How will you claim that? But you need, uh, the, the word of God needs to dwell richly in you because you will find yourself in different situations and you can confess that word of God to the, to the, uh, to the honor of God. And I like what uh, Bishop Mark uh, uh, always says that a man or a woman who walks in the revelation knowledge of the word of God will never be lost in the crowd. So it doesn't matter what uh, the perception or the opinion of the crowd, but when you walk in the revelation of the word of God, like that woman with the issue of blood, and you'll be telling God, yes, I know you, as God of limited responsibilities, and miracles are prizes that cannot be counted. Yes, I have seen you doing this, I have seen you doing this, and I know that you are going to come, because you have, for your thoughts are not my thoughts, your ways are not my ways, there is heaven is to, uh, is to earth. So you'll be even speaking to yourself. You may sometimes out Jibishana now, lakini ndani yako bado utaendelea kukiri because he understands the language of the heart. Praise the name of Jesus. And in James uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 2, C to 3, uh, and, uh, the, the, uh, we will begin from uh, part C and says, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss or you ask wrong, wrongly that you may spend it on your pressures. Spend it on your pressures. And what we are picking there, God wants you to name your desire. God wants you to ask for it. But also our motive it also needs to be right because you can see uh, that uh, you may spend it on your pressures. So it's good even to have the right motive because is it for show off or whatever you want to do, you want to glorify God. Unataka kufanya jambo ndiyo watu, mungu wapokea utukufu, au ndiyo watu hata wae waone, hata wae si kidogo. So your motive needs to be right. And that's why the scripture uh, in uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 8 to, nine, uh, 8 to 9, says that the heart of man is deceitful. I think verse 9 and 10. The heart of man is deceitful above all things. Who can cure it? And the Lord says, it's only he who can cure it. Because he knows our hearts and even the motive of our minds. Hmm? So, <clears throat> we may think that the tongue is a small and insignificant member of the body. But the scriptures in James chapter 3 verse 1 to 12, that you read on your own time. James chapter 3 verse 1 to, uh, to 12, compares the tongue to the power of a small rudder that controls huge ships. Merry and small bits in houses, mouths that control mighty horses. So, Mary hata ikuwa ni kubwa sana, nika kitu kadoka kana itu warada ambaye kana, uh, uwa, uh, uwa kana, kana yongoza. Na hata, hata farasi, iko kitu hui inaekwa kwa mdomo na hiyo kitu ndiyo inaeza kui control. So, the, so, your life is an important and complex thing. But it can be controlled by your tongue. It can be controlled by your tongue. Hebrews 11 verse 3 Hebrews 11 verse 3, the scripture uh, reminds us that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And so that the things which were uh, seen were not, uh, were not made of things which are visible. So, uh, here, here, here one thing we, so we see is that the worlds were framed by the word of God, by the words of God. And if the word of God in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, Ephesians 5 verse 1, tells us to be, uh, Paul told, uh, was telling the Ephesians, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Are we the dear children of God? So even as we are expected to be his imitators. Hmm? So the scripture uh, uh, challenges us to imitate God. And in Genesis 1 26, we, uh, uh, it reminds us that we were created in the image and likeness of God. It says, uh, it says then, then God said, let's, uh, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And let uh, them have dominion over the fish of the, uh, 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 of the sea and the birds of the air and over the cattle and uh, over the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So men, we are given dominion and we are created in the image and likeness of God. That means that we, we must be holy. Because God is holy. It means that we must be caring and loving like our God. But it also means that we can frame our world 
by making declaration, by using our words correctly. What, what, whatever God wanted to see, he spoke into existence. So friends, it's important that you know that your tongue possesses unique creative ability. Whatever you want to see happening in, in your life can be spoken and declared into existence. Making positive declarations means speaking that what the word of God is saying about your life and situation. I'll repeat that. Making positive declaration means speaking what the word of God is saying about your life or your situation. And that's why I say that it's good to walk in the revelation of the word of God. Because that the word of God will remain your guide. And in the, in the, spiritual, in the, spirit, in the realm of the spirit, everything has ears. In the realm of the spirit, everything has ears. So when you command even, even, what, uh, even those things that you are saying and they are not going, you are able to speak to them because in the realm of the spirit, everything has ears. For us believers, we are encouraged by scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, that we walk, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk, we walk by what? We walk by faith, not sight. God is asking us to walk by faith, to believe in his word, and our, our walk in, in life will be a victorious one. So, friends, let's walk in faith. Even as you make those confessions, as you make those claims and declarations, make them in faith. Because God honors faith. And it's impossible, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And it doesn't matter, and I, I tell you, even as you, as you make those claims, know that there are people who are going, uh, who, who are going to, to say that it's not true. But it's you. They are what we call the facts, and they are truths. Facts, you may be sick. And fact is that, uh, is that indeed even you are feeling the pain. But the truth, which is in the word of God, is by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. So that is the truth. And that's what you need to continue confessing. To confessing the truth that is in the word of God. But you can come and be prayed upon. But maybe even you, even you yourself, inside of you, you are speaking negatively. Because remember, as I told you, that God understands even the language of the heart. You may not pronounce them, but in your heart, there is no faith. So, remember, it's important that uh, we walk by faith, not by sight. That is claiming it. And now let's go to take it. To take, to take your claims means to act on the word of God. To act on the word of God. It means to act on your faith. It means to act on your faith and thereby possess your possessions. And friends, it's important that we must have conviction. And you may be asking, why conviction? Because conviction comes with action. So, yes, today even you came to the service, you do not know the Lord, as, uh, 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 Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Yes, you believe he saves. You know, yes, you know, yes, you need a Savior. You know that he saves. But unless you have the conviction and you say yes to Jesus, he cannot come into your life. So, conviction comes with action. Hmm? In Mark 2, verse 1 to, uh, to 5, we are not reading it. In Mark 2, verse 1 to 5, this quoting, Jesus here healed a paralytic who was carried by four men. And in verse 5, uh, uh, it says, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. And, uh, and, uh, and here it says that when Jesus saw their faith, maybe it was not even the faith, even of that paralytic man. For, but for these four men, one of us who are about to roof, uh, you, you can only go to the rooftop and bring someone down, someone down and, uh, uh, only when you are convicted. So let's be convicted. That will be able to move and, uh, and take action. Like now, uh, I enjoy, uh, I, 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 if there is one thing that I, I have learned a lot is uh, when, I, when I'm doing construction and when God gives me a plan to do, uh, to do that. And uh, I usually do it with urgency. Now, uh, I talked with Mark Teknanika Mwambia, mimi ni mutu wa imani. Na saa zingine, uneza sikia ni kiongea mambo kubwa, we uskajari, mimi ni imani. Naeza kuwa sinia pesa, lakini mimi ni imani. And uh, I usually talk to him 
And I remember living here in church, uh, I think on 27, I went somewhere, and uh, as we were watching a certain song, I saw something. And an idea came into my mind. So nilisukumba huyo architect akanicholea na mpaka dakika ya mwisho na nikamwambia weka amendment hapa weka amendment hapa mpaka wakatule ilisha that's when nilipata amani hmm? so it's good that you do when you feel you have com- you are convicted you need to take action <clears throat> and it takes courage to act on your faith that's why god told jo- uh, so courage is needed to act on your faith and uh, one of the marks of successful people is that uh, unsuccessful people act because of their fears, but successful people act in spite of their fears. Yes, they have fears, but they act in spite of their fears. So it takes courage to act on your faith. That's why God told Joshua to be strong and, uh, and to be uh, of good courage, as we see in Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 and 8. And the scripture says, be strong and uh, of good courage, for these these people you shall divide as an inheritance, the land which I sow to your fathers to give them. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your, uh, 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 for then you will make your ways prosperous. Then you will have good success. He will make his way pros- prosperous by obeying, meditating on the word of God, and obeying uh, the word of God. It's not enough to just confess great things; you must obey the word of God. So it's not enough to just confess great things. You must obey the word of God. For example, without tithing and giving offering, your confession about prosperity will not be of any effect because God works in principles. So that's why I say that it's important you understand the word of God. Or maybe uh, you fail to use your, your hands. So you pare kwa kiti tu utaki kufanya kazi hata ukiitua. Lakini nena na mungi nasema that he blesses the work of our hands. So what do you have that God is going to bless? Ninini yo unafanya, unataikana kufanya? So and God rewards, even for example you are serving. But maybe you are serving, complaining. Or even you are not allowing God to use you. You have gone even through the school of readers, but even you are not serving. Or even other trainings. And uh, how can you claim, for example, the reward that God has spoken concerning them that serve him in, in, in Mark chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, where he said that those serve him, they will be his jewels, they will be treasured possessions. And he said that there will be a distinction between them that, uh, uh, that serve him and them that do not serve him. The righteous and even the wicked, there will be a distinction. So it's important that you walk in the revelation knowledge of the word of God. When God decides to honor your confessions and comes to earth with, with your blessings, he will be looking for your seed. And when you talk about your seed, is, we are talking about the confession. And not just confession, the positive confession. Kwa sabu, si ingataka ufanya hizo negative, to mama na kufanya mambo hile ingine. That is the seed that you have planted so that he can bless, bless you supernaturally. But if there is no seed, what can God bless? He has nothing to work with. So maybe you are in the position that you are because there is no seed that you have planted. What are you confessing concerning your children? What are you, concerning, uh, what are you declaring concerning your job, concerning your ministry, uh, concerning, uh, concerning even your business? So it's important that. So there are those, those, those three things that we need to name it as we, uh, we are trying our, the, what we desire from the Lord. We claim it. But because we'll be doing it, uh, we'll be claiming it through faith by, uh, by knowing the word of God. And then we are, we'll be, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, we'll, be, we'll be taking it or possessing it uh, by, by acting on that faith. In conclusion, as you abide in Christ and his word abides in you, you will desire things that are consistent with the word of God. And when you name them, claim, claim them, you will receive them. When your heart is right, wealth and riches cannot destroy you. For example, in your own time, you'll see that Abraham was very rich, but he knew that his prosperity came from one source, El Shaddai, that is his God. And that you can be able to see in Genesis 14, 22 to 23. His faith in God was not destroyed by riches. Remember this, every good and perfect gift is from, from above, coming down from the Father of heaven rights, who does not change in sh- uh, uh, like shifting uh, shadows. Uh, the Bible makes it clear that it's the love of money 
not money that corrupts. It's not enough to just name it and claim it. You must step further and obey the word of God. That's how you take it. You must act on your faith. No God personally for yourself. You can have what you say, but you must act on it. Faith without works is dead. And that's what the scripture reminds us in James 2 verse 14. Maybe you are here and you came. Yes, you have named it. And, uh, uh, you have named it that yes, you, you know that you, you have walked, uh, you, you have read this life alone, but you, you feel that you are, not, you are not in control. And you feel that you would like Jesus to come into your life. That one requires that you exercise your faith. And you act on that faith by saying yes to Jesus. I don't know if you are there, if you are there and you would like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of, of, of your life, you can lift your hand and Jesus is going to come into your life even as we pray together. Are you there? Then uh, for the rest of us, uh, let's, stand, let's stand up. And I know if uh, you feel that there are those things that you need God to come through for you, and that God, you desire God to change even how you have, how you have been living your, your life, that you use correctly your word, I would like you to, we, we all stand and let's pray. Our Father and our God in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you, we want to glorify you, King of glory, for your word that Lord has come forth to us, King of glory. And thank you because, Lord, of reminding us, King of glory, that uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Heavenly Father, forgive us for many instances that, Lord, we have used, Lord, our tongue wrongly, Jehovah God. But this day, Jehovah God, I pray, King of glory, that, Lord, you cause us to have effective, positive confessions, King of glory. Lord, even as we are trying, Lord, our desires to you, King of glory, knowing, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, you are not limited, Lord, in any way, Jehovah God. Even, Lord, even as we make our claims, my God, that, Heavenly Father, we will make them in expectancy, King of glory. Because, Lord, we know that, Lord, you honor us, faith, King of glory. And, Heavenly Father, Lord, you cause us, King of glory, to act on that faith, King of glory. Even, Lord, when it may look as if, Lord, it's not right, it's safe, it's safe for us, Jehovah God. But, Heavenly Father, Lord, you continue to convince us, King of glory that you'll be convicted, Jehovah God, that, Lord, you're on our side, King of glory. Thank you, Lord, because of the past, Lord, we have seen you, Lord, being our help and fighting our battles, Jehovah God. And, Lord, I lift your people to you, King of glory, as they face, Lord, a new week, King of glory. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that, Lord, that they look at their eyes, Jehovah God. And, Heavenly Father, Lord, desire to make positive conversions, my God, in line with your word, Jehovah God, and to work, Lord, on the truth they know from your word, King of glory. And, Lord, I know that, Lord, their life, Lord, you have a turn around to the honor and to the praise, Lord, of your holy name. Be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.